Yeah, I like to take a nip out of the old jug every now and then. Who doesn't? Why not? A few drinks, a few laughs, a pretty girl or two. What's the worst that could happen? My head hurts. And I just can't seem to get up out of this bed to ring for room service. Not a bad hotel room, and I've seen my share. Welcome to the Timberline Lodge, winter of 98, 1998. You see, back in 98, if I could have picked up a telephone, it would have been to report a murder, my own. Nobody tells you this, but they change the rules when you're dead. Time becomes fluid and crisscrosses back and forth like honey in a half-empty jar. Too bad such a pleasant little evening had to end this way. But when you're a guy who's always on the make, you're willing to put up with quite a bit from the skirts you chase. I never said I was a good judge of character, but I do know someone who is. What? Yeah, this Joe's in. Look, asshole, I just told you. This is Joe's in. What do you mean you're gonna report me to my manager? Fuck, like I have time for this. All right, you wanna know my name? I'm five foot two, I have short black hair, and I'm Chinese. I go by the name Fu Ku Ru, but you can call me Fuck you! <sighs> Sorry about that. Some guys are such my roads. I got stooge Bill Emerson. You know, he was here the night that M Margaret and Edie were in here. Probably missed him by mm, 20 minutes. He's a drunk. He is always drunk. He had a rap sheet as long as my arm. Always full of himself trying to get into everybody's panties, talking about his ultimate fantasy of doing it with the double mint twins. Well, I tell you, that Margaret and Edie, they, they ain't no double mint twins. Yeah, Margaret, she's a sap. But that Edie, she's nasty. I wouldn't want to bump into her in no dark alley. Those two dames are gonna be on TV tonight. Mm. Good night, Corbin. Joe? Jeff? Here, let me put the remote on for you. Tonight on Good Night Portland, we are fortunate to have with us twin sisters Edie and Margaret from Northeast Portland, who share a bond that borders the paranormal. Margaret, how old were you when you became aware of your psychic connection with your twin sister, Edie? Edie and I have always been very close. But I have to say that our psychic connection first became formidable while we were attending grade school at St. Anne's Academy. Are you really going to tell that same old tired story about how we used to grip milk money from children? Ma Veronica, that's crap. Pure crap. If you want a real story, I'll give you a real story. We had this act in Las Vegas where she would go out on stage and pull out some dumb pigeon, pull them out of the audience and ask the poor slob to tell her their most embarrassing moment. And it was my job to read Margaret's mind and tell all those poor suckers out in the audience who paid $5 a pop to get into whatever dump we were in at the time, all about it. Oh, Edie, do you mind? You're making us sound so common. Have you no human consideration? Show me a human oh, and really? I might have. Oh, Margaret, dry up. Don't be such a sap. And don't go playing governess with me. I haven't your unyielding good taste. I wish I'd gone to Radcliffe too, but father would have none of it. He needed me behind the notions counter. Oh, I'm being rude now, aren't I? Or should I say, ain't I? 
Obviously, being twins comes with its challenges. Have you ever assumed each other's identity? Funny you should mention that. I think it's time we talk about Bill Emerson. Dear departed Bill Emerson. Sure. I need those two broads. How? Go to end. Margaret Needy. Both a couple of drunks. They were here the night that Stooge Bill Emerson got murdered up at the lodge. Sat right over there in that booth. Margaret, she had a oh, cup of soup. Edie, she had a hard boiled egg and a pickle. Yeah, Margaret, she, well, is a sap. But that Edie, man, she's nasty. I wouldn't want to meet her in no dark alley, no siree. And waitress, waitress, where is my My shirt? name ain't waitress, it's Mary. Sherry? Mary! Sherry. It's Mary, goddammit! M is in motherfucker, A is in asshole. Jesus Christ. Okay, Mrs. Jesus Christ, where is my steak? Oh, sh shut the fuck up before I take a steak and drive it through your heart, you goddamn vampire. God, look at this crap. Karen Carpenter would be vomiting in her own oh, grave. Oh, come on, Sherry, I'm hungry. Oh, shut the fuck up. Just shut up. Oh, come on, Margaret, out with it. Out with it. Timberline Lodge, December 21st. 1998, a night that will go down in history like the Chicago Fire or the Massacre of the Huguenots. This one and I, we check into the Timberline Lodge because we're tired of staying at all these dumps we've been staying at for the past 12 years. We down a fifth of booze between the two of us and head back up to our rooms to sleep it off. Um, we always sleep in separate rooms because this one snores like a pig with its head in the trough. Who should come knocking on my door but dear old lover boy Bill Emerson. The clerk downstairs had switched the rooms and gave, gave him mine instead of Margaret's. Well, he wanted to surprise her. Well, he sure surprised me and he doesn't believe me when I tell him I'm not Margaret. And, and, and he breaks down the door and he won't take no for an answer. And, and he starts coming at me like some kind of, kind of a wild caged tiger. And I looked at him and I said, Bill Emerson, you touch me and you won't live till morning. Well, then he tries to make love to me, so I shoot him. And he, the poor sap takes one to the forehead and drops dead on the bed like a chimpanzee with a brain aneurysm. No one gets into my wiener box without paying the price of admission. No ticky, no laundry. <laughs> oh, Edie, no, not Bill. He was the only man I ever loved. Oh, Bill. <laughs> A few drinks, a few laughs, a pretty girl or two. What's the worst that could happen? You tell me. At least my head doesn't seem to hurt so much anymore. Funny how gentle people can get with you once you're dead. Mm -hmm.